What's up guys, welcome back to Doki Doki Drawing, I'm Nihongo Gamer and you know on this channel we've shown you some drawing tips, often interviews with pro Japanese artists, but you can never get enough gear. In previous videos we've shown you stuff like this, this is probably the most common pencil that you find us using on this channel, it's a, it's a lead holder, do check out the video if you're interested to see more on this. Today I've got something really cool for you to see, it's this, the Bakuman Technique Kit. Now, if you're into drawing manga, you may have already read this manga or seen the anime series where these characters try to become professional mangaka and make their debut. I think the idea was to make their debut before they'd actually graduated from high school and make an anime out of it as well. And it's such a cool show because they do tell you a lot. They give you a pretty good look at what it's like to be a mangaka in Japan trying to get into the business. When it comes to drawing manga, there really are no rules on what tools you're supposed to use. You could draw a manga not using any screen tone at all. You could draw a manga not using this G pen that he's holding here at all. You don't need a doll that's like the one that's included in this set but often you want a place to start you know you want to know what are the cool tools that mangaka are using and this series by Delita actually has quite a few tools that can get you started to at least feel what it's like to experience using tools that are commonly used in manga production. Now the set that I'm holding here costs about 2,100 yen, which is roughly 18 or 19 dollars, I believe, in the West. Don't know if this is relevant, but it says it's for ages 15 and up. I'm absolutely certain that if you're not age 15 and up, you can probably still get quite a lot out of this set. Let's go ahead and take it out of the pocket packaging. Inside of this Bakuman Technique Kit, by Delita, well, you get the plastic box, which we can throw off to the side, and inside we've got a number of cool drawing tools. First one is a design doll. I've never actually had one of these before, and you will be limited on the number of poses you can actually do with this, but it could give you a pretty good idea if you've got no reference photos at hand, or you don't have one of those 3D posing software things like in Clip Studio Paint, where you can use that to decide poses. This could give you a vague idea, you know, if you hold the doll at this angle, how much of the legs do you see, or, you know, a very basic pose. The screen tones themselves, I actually want to have a look at this first, because I really do think this is probably the main point of this set. Let's go ahead and open it out of the plastic packaging. I don't actually know how many sheets of this screen tone you get in here. And the truth is, even though I've been working on manga related things for so long, drawing related things for so long, this is literally the first time I have ever held actual <laughs> screen tone. I, it has never occurred to me to actually go out to the shops and buy them. Probably because there are so many hundreds of screen tones, so you don't really know which one to buy, or which one would be useful, and even if you bought it, you don't really know how you would actually apply it. So this is a really useful set, especially for me, because like I've been <laughs> surrounded by manga for so long and never actually got around to actually applying any screen tone. You can see that in this first set of SE special effects tones, you've got a large number of cool things that you can use to put in the background. Maybe you want to show a character having a sudden shock, you can often put their emotion right there in the background with this lightning bolts of, who knows, these are kind of like the synapses of the brain connecting as the neurons fire, uh, something a little more simple when you just need a little bit of variety, some ink splodges, maybe you could even pretend that these are blood stains if you cut them at exactly the right shape. Some very simple, not completely white, but not completely black. This is a, a light gray, very, very subtle texture that you could put in the background. And this is quite a simple dot tone. Let's have a look inside here. I don't believe these are tones. These look like drawing cards. Let's have a look at the inside, what they actually are. Maybe there's some sort of example sheets to show you what you could do with the tone. Oh, yeah, okay. it looks like these are kind of examples of how tone might be used. You've got like a character just doing something cool in front of some simple dot tone instead of a boring white background. Or, you know, plain if you want to apply the tone yourself, you can try different kinds of tone and see how that affects the mood 
of the picture. You've got the blank one as well. You've got a character, I believe this is one of the characters that they actually draw in the manga, so it's a combination of the splodge tones in the background, but also I guess using black the black marker pen, you could also just draw some extra stuff onto the front of it, or you can color in these effect lines as you like. There's a blank version as well, so you can experiment with that. And I guess that's the whole point. You've got the tone applied version and the completely blank no tone applied version. So you can really experiment and see how the mood changes if you put a different tone there in the background. And uh, I guess if you really want to, you could, <laughs> after you've finished your tone application, you can actually put someone's postcode and address and you can <laughs> you can send them a postcard of your, of your hard work. I don't know why you would do that. But we've also got pens and so anything that you can't do with tone you'll want to fill in the blanks with these pens. So of course if you've actually seen Bakuman before you'll know that the character is often using tools like this. This is a G pen which is a nib pen. You dip it in the ink and it kind of spreads out onto the page. But you don't have to do everything with those manga pens. You can obviously do quite a lot with marker pens or just using a paintbrush. Once you've photocopied the artwork for sending to the publisher, it really doesn't matter what pen you drew with. And often a lot of the times, people won't even know what pen you drew with unless you, you've gone for a very specific style that shows off the characteristic look of ink that was drawn with a G pen or something. If you can get away with doing all of the line variation with just a marker pen, and if that's easier for you, you could just draw completely with this. I think the reason they've included these pens, however, is more so that you can do stuff like filling in the areas that aren't in the screen tone. So particularly in an image like this, you can see that the screen tone that they've included over here, it looks like they've used this screen tone. You can cut it out so it fits right behind the character like this, but then all of these black areas here, I guess these are sort of feathers or wings or effects, I'm not really sure what these lines are supposed to be. You can fill those areas in with these marker pens. Now the two pens you actually get in the set seem to be labelled the same, they are Neo Pico Line 3, but they have slightly different model names, so let's just see if the tips are actually a little bit different. This one's got a nice thin tip, like so. And this one is, ah, this one is a milli pen. I don't know what you call them in English. It's a fine liner. Very different styles of pen. So if you want to get that brushed look or you're just painting large areas, you might want to use this brush pen at the top. But if you're doing some very fine line work or maybe you're even writing some text or you're doing some line art around the characters or details on the face or something, you might want to use this I keep calling it a milli pen because that's what they call it in Japanese, this fine liner. I didn't actually notice that on the top of the lids, it actually gives you an idea of what the pens are. The BR obviously stands for brush. I'll put that back on the brush pen. And the O3 actually stands for 0.3 because that is the, oops, that is the thickness of this fine liner here. It is 0.3 millimeters. There is one more piece of this kit that is included and it looks like a tone application stick. Even if you don't have a tool like this, I think if you have something like a ruler in your house, you can probably do something that's very, very similar, but there will be benefits to having these ridges here so that you can apply some nice flat tone. Like even if you're drawing, even if you're pushing down at an angle, the surface that is actually pushing down on the tone will be nice and flat as it pushes down on the tone and applies it nice and smoothly to the page. So I'm already very impressed with the number of things that are included in this set, but you also get an instruction manual so you can actually learn how to use the tools that are included in here. First, there's some advertising for the other sets that you can buy. You got one of these windy rulers and a G pen holder. This is the set that we've actually purchased today. It's got the fine liner, the brush pen, the screen tone applicator, the example cards and the screen tones. And then there is a third set as well, which is a color kit. So if you're interested in drawing like the, the front page of your manga or if you're drawing a manga completely all in color, then you can experiment with coloring in your characters using these colorful pens. And if you've got the bug and you just can't stop applying tone to all of your illustrations or manga, you can actually check out the proper deleter screen tones. They're much larger, obviously, than these samples that you get. And there are, I don't know if there's hundreds, but there's, there's a large number of screen tones. There's at least a few hundred, I'm sure. But on the front and the back, you get a small explanation of how to use the kit. 
Now I have to admit, I have never done screen tones myself, so I actually have no idea what is actually involved in applying screen tones, but it says basically you're gonna cut the screen tone to the right shape that you require, remove the areas that you're not using, and then you're going to push it down with the screen tone applicator. Now this is only an unboxing video, but it would be kind of a shame not to apply a little bit of tone before we leave, so let's just grab a little bit of card. In fact, let's just use the, the back side of this card, and let's get a small example of screen tone so we can actually test this. So, for example, let's try this dot tone here. Unfortunately, the kit does not include a knife as well, so you'll have to get a box cutter, or I'm just gonna use a standard pocket knife for this. And let's cut a small piece of this tone, like so. So let's say that this was all the tone that we're going to use. All right, this is actually really super exciting for me because I've never handled screen tone before. I was not actually aware that you could just peel the backing off and just use it like a sticker. I thought maybe you had to some glue down or something, I'm not really sure what I thought. Basically you can actually peel it off like a sticker and so the back is transparent and shouldn't show up when you do a scan later on. And if I put it on the page where I want it to be, like right here, then you can push it down like this and if you want to apply it nice and smoothly you can use the applicator as well and make sure it's right there down on the page. And when you scan that into your computer, you shouldn't see the transparent areas. You should only see the dots and the white paper. Oh, and actually I completely forgot to look at the Pose doll. I'll just take him out of the box so they can have a look. But we can also, again, have a closer look at the Pose doll. You can already see like you can move the arms in ways that the human arm can't actually move, but you can also not quite get angles that would be quite easy for a human to do. It's like this is kind of the limit here. Anyway, we'll, we'll experiment with this pose doll in a, in a separate video. But essentially that is all for the set. The example cards, screen tones, two different kinds of pen, a brush pen and a fine liner. You've got the screen tone applicator, you've got a pose doll, and you've also got an instruction manual just in case you've never used this sort of thing before. All for the kind of quite reasonable price of just under $20. So be sure to stay tuned for future videos where we can have a closer look at the tools that are included in this set and actually experiment more with them. Remember to subscribe to Doki Doki Drawing, leave a comment if there's anything you want to see specifically about this set, and I'll see you all next time.